Hey, what's up guys? Talon back with the video. Um, I wanted to make a quick video. I haven't done a, a video where I uh, do any kind of talking or uh, kind of show you guys some pretty cool stuff that uh, I've been doing uh, with some of my systems lately. And uh, one of the things I did is I built this uh, new rig here, kind of out of old parts, some new parts, and some free parts. Um, and it's it, this is not its permanent home. It's I don't even know if I'm going to keep it in in this in this room. Uh, it's kind of like a great room, living room that we have uh, our main TV in. And usually this stuff over here is kind of mishmashed around between the two. Um, I'm thinking maybe I'll put it over here in this corner, and then it's hooked up to an LG OLED 4K, uh, so it has 4K 120 hertz with G-Sync. And I was my plan was either just build it and sell it or build it and keep it and put it either in my bedroom as a like a bedroom PC or leave it in the living room as a living room PC. And then, you know, you can just do like a little bit of couch gaming or whatever. Um, I haven't decided, I've, I've been messing around to see if I actually like it, but I got the case here it is my old Lee and Lee case. I don't use that anymore. And uh, I upgraded to a Corsair 7000D with my uh, 12900K and Z690 because I put in a 480 millimeter liquid cooler from Corsair. And so I had this case, it wouldn't fit anymore. So I used the case, I used my old uh, Corsair LL120 fan kit that I had, and that's hooked into uh, my old Corsair 280 millimeter H115i liquid cooler. Um, and so that's all in the, the, the fan hub that actually comes with the cooler, so all these can connect in. And then you've got the RGB fans up there as well. So it looks pretty nice, it looks pretty clean. There's not a ton of fans in there, it's kind of rainbowy. If you're into that, I might change the colors. Um, and then I have my old Trident Z5s. Those are Samsung uh, DDR5 6, 6000 CL36. SK Hynix are far better, so that's what I'm using in my main rig. So these are just sitting around. So I use those. I picked up $159 12-400 from Micro Center, and I picked up an open box um, ASRock Z690 Velocita PG. And the reason I picked that up, I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. Nobody's really talked about it on the internet. I haven't seen anyone confirm that it was working, but through research and looking at the manual and stuff, it, it was pretty obvious to me that it would support non-K BCLK overclocking. Um, so I found one open box for $290 on Amazon. I used some rewards points and I got out the door about $195 for a Z690 that supports D5 uh, and non-BCLK overclocking PCI 5.0. I thought it was a phenomenal deal. And then the RTX 3070s from EBGA, it's just the black, the cheapest edition they have. And I got that for free because I had EBGA bucks and they ended the program. So it was either cash them out or buy something. So I got that for free after my EBGA bucks uh, were used up. Um, pretty much covered the entire thing. I think I, I may have paid like $20 or something to get it shipped. Um, and then I have an old, uh, PCI 4.0 drive that I took out of a laptop. It's one terabyte, and I had replaced that with a, a Samsung 980 Pro. So yeah, that's it. Just got the, the Wi-Fi antenna sitting on here. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else. Oh, and then I have an EVGA 750 watt G2 power supply in there that I got on hardware swap on Reddit for like $40 like two years ago. It was used and it works perfect. It came with all the cables, looked brand new. Um, and it's more than enough to power this. So you guys can see here, we have the 12400. It's running at 5.1 uh, gigahertz on all cores, all six P cores. And it doesn't have any E cores, so just you can see the six and 12. And I've got that set to, I think, at 1.275 volts in the BIOS, and that's LLC3. So it's got a decent amount of E droop. So when it goes under load, you know, that voltage will drop down and uh, it's, not, it's not too extreme. It keeps the temperatures with this cooler under 70 degrees Celsius in Cinebench power draw is about 110 watts so yeah we've definitely pushed up the power draw here from you know it's max tdp at stock is 65 watts but it goes you know well beyond that and i'll show you guys that as well i'll show you the uh i am filming this with an iphone so you guys can see let me see if i can just move this over here you guys can see i've got the asrock z690 pg Velocita. so again for the price, the board right now, brand new, is, is $369. I would say that's probably 
That and the Tai Chi. The Tai Chi is actually on sale on Newegg as well for the exact same price. Get the Tai Chi. I didn't know that. And I got mine again open box from Amazon. It showed up brand new. The open box deal was um, still in its... Uh, um, it's like a factory packaging foam that they ship it in. And so it was still brand new inside that pack, uh, that factory foam. When I received it, I had to, you know, it was zip tied in, so I had to break the zip tie. So it was brand new. There's nothing wrong with it. Definitely look out for Amazon deals because you can find some, some phenomenal deals. So the BIOS you do want, though, is this 10.02. And it came out in May. Actually, I think it's posted as June on the website. Um, there's a newer one that they came out that's supposed to support Intel Next Gen. When I used it, I think I may have messed up, but when I used it, the options for non-BCLK overclock are there, but anytime I would turn that on or if I would change the B clock from standard, uh, 100 megahertz, uh, it would just refuse to boot and it would give me a postcode. So I rolled uh, the BIOS out of box was 5.02. That didn't work. Uh, the original BIOS is the one before that didn't work and I think there was one more. So I just went to the newest one. Again, I had that issue. So then I rolled back one version, back to 10.02, which is just a couple weeks before the newest one. 100% works, no issues. Non-BCLK non is there. Also, my CPU I got at Micro Center 159, just got it two weeks ago, still has AVX 512. And you can tell that by the lid. And then the cool thing about this, even though this is a new BIOS, what ASRock does is when you select AVX 512 on, it automatically changes the micro code um, from the newer microcode from Intel to an older microcode that still supports ABX 512. So even though it's on new BIOS, it will change the microcode and boot and you'll have ABX 512. Pretty cool. If you turn it off, it goes to the newer microcode from Intel. Um, and then I'm running uh, the Samsung, uh, it's the Samsung, but it's the G-Skill Trident Z5s with Samsung memory uh, that you can see here, Samsung. And it's running, I've got it about, I think, what is that about, almost 6,200. Maker, it's at CL16. Haven't changed any voltages. Just it's kind of a byproduct of using BCLK overclocking. You kind of select the memory speed that's most uh, closely um, set to your uh, uh, speed that you have or what you're trying to overclock to. So, I'll show you guys, this is the motherboard that I'm actually using right here. And what you're looking for, and how I kind of knew it supported, it, is if you come down to the specifications or if you go into the manual. What you're looking for is this right here. Supports ASRock, ASRock Hyper BCLK engine. It doesn't matter what number it is. It's just that it has that, and that tells you that it has an external clock generator built in and lets you know that it should support non-K BCLK overclocking. Um, only certain boards do. Most of, for example, I showed you guys earlier, I uploaded some videos of some gaming with my SUS board using a 12100F and a... A G7400. That board is $600. This board is is 369 brand new. So is the Tai Chi. Excellent boards from what I'm finding right now. Actually, it seems like it's very highly underrated. I'm having absolutely no issues. Everything works perfect. And uh, that's kind of what it looks like right there. It's it's not the prettiest board, but I don't hate it. It's got some pretty cool RGB. It's got a decent VRM. I'd have no uh, hesitation recommending this board, honestly. No issues at all. So I'm going to go into the BIOS really quick. And actually, before I do that, I'll just show you guys really quick. We'll do, I'll open up and what I'm talking about here so you can see it. I'm going to open up Hardware Info 64 and just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So when you select AVX 512 on, what it does is it changes that microcode um, from the newest one to this version that will still select AVX 512, enable it, and you can see it's enabled there as well. So all of it's supported. I'm gonna close this out. And we're gonna to go to sensors. I think I can close this, no. Gosh, trying to do this on a, like a wood table top, essentially. We're just gonna load the sensors. I think I messed it up, I did. Standing like right next to this TV and then trying to film as well as such a pain. Okay, so you guys can see the clock speeds there. You can see the bus clock, I've got it at 128, so that's our BCLK. And we'll do a quick bench. 
show you the performance so you that it is a real uh, overclock. And then you can see it's still holding those clocks. There's your temperatures under load. Got up to about 58, 60 degrees Celsius. It is just CPU-Z. Pulled 87 watts. Not too bad. So even though we've pushed the clocks way up, you can see we've only pulled 87 watts there. That's what we scored. And to put that into perspective, uh, here's a 10900K with 10 cores. This has six cores. It blows its doors off in single core and doesn't really get beat that bad in multi. Now, if we look at something like a 10700 or even the 11900. So even though the 11900K had eight cores, 16 threads, we're beating it both single core and pretty close on the multi-core just with a, a six core CPU. So one last test. I'm gonna reset these sensors and we're gonna start. So we're rendering right now in Cinebench. We're sub 70 degrees. Well, right there, we're at 70 degrees Celsius, but still pretty much sub 5.1 gigahertz. Pulling about 107 watts. We can go back up to the temps here, see what they're doing. We still have only peaked at 70 on, uh, on one of the cores. One point two one six volt looks like roughly where its happy medium is at. Okay, we scored fifteen thousand seven hundred twenty one points, which is really really good for a six core CPU. If you kind of compare that to a Threadripper from first generation, from basically matching a sixteen core thirty two thread CPU. Uh, which is six cores, just to show how far we've kind of come. And then I'm going to go into the BIOS here. Okay, give me one second, guys. I am going to pull up the BIOS, I just need a second. It's going to reboot. sip of coffee when it pops up on the screen just mash the delete key for us as rock you can also do f2 but delete or f2 either one so I'm using this wireless keyboard delete seems to kind of work just a little bit better Give it a second, it'll pop up the BIOS. Seems like the uh, fast boot is disabled, so that kind of kind of plays a little bit into it. You guys can see there's Z690, 12400. And we're gonna go up to this, to the overclock tweaker. And one of the first options you're gonna see there is non-KBCLK. And you can see that I've got that enabled. That's only there on the newer BIOS if you um, keep that enabled. And you can see enable for non-KBCLK, the specification process res results warm reset and sleep become invalid. So basically it can cause issues with it kind of suspending or whatnot. And you can see the way I've got it set up here with the 128 megahertz BCLK, it puts the clock speed at 5120 megahertz and 44 for the cache and then the memory at 6144. And the way you can kind of configure that is you're gonna to come to CPU configuration. I just set all core for the P core ratios to 40, that's the max multiplier. And then I set the cache ratio to 35 and then 128. So what you have to do basically here is set this number you want. I would set the P core to max and then set the number that you want here and then adjust. 
because if you make a change to the B clock, it's gonna make a change to that. It's gonna take that 128 times 40, 128 times 35 to get that value. Same thing for your memory. So if you make a change here to your B clock, you also are gonna to have to make changes to your cache, your core ratio, and then come into your DRAM and it's gonna change this as well, but you can you can make sure that your DRAM is still gonna work by just, even though you have XMP supported, you can just select here under frequency and then select the speed that is closest to your uh, XMP profile. For me, 5888 is a little slow, 6144, I know it'll do it. So I'll just select that and that's what I use. Then you're also gonna wanna mess around with your voltages which is one of the options here. And the way I have it set is I'm just using fixed mode at 1.275 with LLC three. And if you look at the LLC, the reason I'm selecting that, if you look here, as V-Core, V-Core goes up as you select a higher level, even under load. So you can see it's V-Core stays stable even though it's being loaded. But what we want is V-Core to here and as we load the CPU, we kind of want it to droop. So I select three. That's actually very normal. Having a high B core idle is fine. What you want it to do is kind of droop down under load and that prevents it from spiking too high or putting too much current through the CPU, which can eventually degrade or damage the CPU. I don't know how long it would take or what value it would need, but ideally having a high B core at idle is not a problem. And then the ideal situation is that it's lower once you're loaded. So you have to adjust this higher for idle and then for a higher overclock. And then when it gets loaded, it's going to droop, but you want to make sure it doesn't droop too far that it crashes. So you may have set this higher for idle, but again, at idle, totally safe. Hope that makes sense, guys. Um, if you have any more questions about this, I do have a B660 ASRock Riptide PG coming in, and that is DDR4, PCI 4.0 but also supports uh, non-K BCLK overclocking. So I've got that coming in from China right now. I had to buy it on AliExpress, not available in the US right now. Nobody has them as far as I know in the United States. When I get that, I will do some testing on that for you guys and uh, probably build another system because I still have another power supply. I have another case. I have an even older cooler than that, still 280 millimeter. I have DDR4. I've got an NVMe I can throw in there. But I have no graphics card, so I do have a, I, I have a 7850 from AMD, from its super old two gigabyte card. But uh, I guess I could put that in for just testing. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, hope this was useful. I'll catch you later.